Hey guys, what's up? Sandu here. You'll be probably rising an eyebrow right now. I know that it feels kind of weird having a Topic D90 review, then coming up with a D90 MQA review uh, afterwards. But there is still a difference between these two units and uh, even by completely ignoring those MQR files. So this in-depth review will not feel like a copy-paste and uh, I wouldn't use the same words. So let's check it out. If you checked my former DX7 Pro and D90 review, you would know that I really liked the form factor and the build quality of those units and D90 MKOA is absolutely the same in this regard. It has a small footprint so it can be easily integrated into tight spaces as office desks or in headphone setups. I like that those three buttons on the front are not sticking out too much, that OLED screen is perfectly aligned too, so no more OCD for me as it was the case with other units. So D90 MQA is quite a looker, it has a really simple yet elegant look. D90 has a lot of small details that often will differentiate a great product from a good product. For example, the MQA logo is laser engraved on the case. My $3000 Matrix Element X has a cheap sticker with that MQA logo as a point of reference. So topping carved 4 round spaces underneath it, so the rubber feet would sit in there without moving an inch. And lapis de resistance is definitely that unibody case that has a simple front and back plate attached to it. So it really looks expensive and nicely put together. Topic is offering two color options, so you can have it in black or in silver. I received it in silver. At first I thought that I might not look that option, but it looks exactly like the case of the Element X, which I like quite a lot. It's more like a matte silver, unlike the older D30 that had that boring raw anodized aluminium. As for the controls and connectivity, on the front panel we will find only three buttons. The first one on the left will power it on and a longer press will put it into the standby mode. Once the unit is working, a short press will swap the digital input. On the right you have the up and down buttons that will change options in that menu or the volume settings if the preamp mode is engaged. In the middle there is a nice and bright monochrome OLED screen that will show a lot of important stuff as the selected input, output, the working mode, I mean the DAC or DAC plus preamp mode, the sample rate, PCME or DSD data stream and the volume level if the preamp mode is engaged. On the back all the nicer digital inputs are present as a USB, I2S, optical, coaxial, AAC, there is also a Bluetooth antenna socket too. So being a fully balanced DAC it also offers a pair of XLR and RCA outputs both are volume controllable or fixed, depending on the settings, and you can even disable a pair of analog outputs if you want. As for the tech inside it, they use the best commercial DAC chip available today. So obviously the start of the show is that huge, current-driven, quad-channel AK4499 DAC chip of Asaki Kasei. It is their best so far and part of a premium switched resistor DAC chips. Topping used a single chip, but since that is a quad-channel one, a single one is enough for a full balanced signal. Topic is using a very advanced Altera Max 2 FPGA that together with two AcuSilicon femtosecond clocks will extract the best performance out of the AK4499. It is important to know that the Altera FPGA is infused with Topic's own code, so obviously the same hardware with different software code can sound very different, hence the substantial difference in sound quality between various DACs with the same components. As for the power supply, Topping went with an encapsulated transformer, followed by 6 independent voltage regulators and by 7 big electrolytic high-grade caps that were specially designed for audio components. The start of the show is obviously that full-blown MQA decoder incorporated that works only via the USB input. D90 MQA can fully unfold the MQR files stored on your PC or streamed directly via hi-fi streaming services as Tidal, for example. Another major improvement was utilizing the newest and the highest performance XMOS interface that was developed to date. It is called XU216. Simply put, this interface has double the processing power of the one that sits in the regular D90. It also has four times the RAM size compared to that one. So in simple words it means that D90 MQA has the potential of sounding better, than the regular D90 on the USB input, especially with high resolution PCME and DSD material that requires more RAM and more higher processing power. Before going deep into its performance I have some very important tips and tricks to share with you 
That will help you in achieving and unlocking basically the best sound quality out of this unit. So you can control the D90 MQA with the, these three buttons on the front plate. You can control it with the included remote control. But there is also a hidden menu that will uh, basically will unlock the true potential of this unit. To access it, simply turn it off completely with the switch on the back. Press and hold the standby button on the front panel. And while you keep pressing it, just turn the switch on the back to on position and an advanced menu will appear. Firstly, if you are using the D90 MQA in a headphone setup, or if you already have a dedicated preamp in your speaker setup, I strongly recommend disabling the preamp mode. Secondly, if you use just a single analog output, RCA or XLR, and don't use the second one, I recommend disabling the second output. Thirdly, if you don't plan on using the Bluetooth input, or maybe you'll use it casually from time to time, I recommend disabling the Bluetooth module entirely. Lastly, digital filter number 3 and digital filter number 4 have the best measurements and the lowest ringing past 20 kHz. So this is why I recommend using the filter number 3 for a smoother top end or filter number 4 for a more treble presence. So by following these tips you'll be squeezing the last drop of performance out of this unit. Ok guys, let's move on to the most important part, sound performance. Some grumpy audio files are still considering that you cannot have high-end sonics or even decent performance out of units that cost less than 2000 US dollars. I know few people that think this way. Others simply think that uh, in the sub 1000 price category there are only entry level or maybe mid fi digital tonal converters at best. I am judging an audio component by its performance first and then by its price. So if I would be a grumpy audio file and I would listen to the 90 MQA, I uh, would play with all its features uh, with that uh, user-friendly interface, then I would probably say that it costs around 3000 US dollars. So I feel that the 90 MQA is without a doubt a really impressive sounding DAC even at double its price. So I say it uh, just because I'm testing a lot of DACs lately and uh, as time passes by, the difference between an expensive uh, DAC and a really affordable DAC is shrinking day by day at a very rapid rate. So I'm very glad that this happens because not everybody can afford multi-thousand uh, audio systems. So D90 MQA is quite an eye-opener when it comes to simple things as user interface, uh, ease of use, features and most important uh, sound quality of course. All in all it sounds really extended in the frequency response. Uh, it impressed the most with that uh, layered, with that punchy, with that uh, deep diving bass response with that naturalness, uh, soul grabbing mid-range, with that open wide sound that just uh, brings more air into the room. So uh, treble I feel is quite extended and you can hear uh, every shimmer quite clear. So any drum hit will be clearly defined and easily uh, heard without stressing yourself too much. Uh, sharpness I feel that is not the strongest point of this unit. So uh, D90 MQA just wants to impress it uh, with everything else and not with uh, that treble crispness. So very strong leading edges are not present as well and maybe it's for the good. So I'm listening to it for the fourth day straight after that uh, 150 hours of burning and still I'm not having any kind of uh, listening fatigue. So if you are working while are you listening to music, I feel that D90 MQA is a really effortless, a really easy rider in my opinion. If you are coming from any topping DAC to this unit, the gain in performance is simply massive. So I'm hearing just a much bigger sonic improvement coming from um, the mid-range D70 to the D90 MQA than from the entry-level E30 to the mid-range D70. So all the past sources from the topping were engineered quite well, but they lacked a few key areas. Um, when it came to that uh, raw slam and punch, they never really did that with authority and uh, the stage size well being good, it was never really great. So D90 MQA feels just a very big departure from all their products and even some costlier units from uh, Europe or from USA uh, didn't impress me that much. <coughs> My tech benchmark. Ok, so in the end uh, it all comes to the tonal balance, so this is where uh, D90 MQA uh, hit the nail into the head, so preserving all that technical aspects as much as possible and also offering that um, sweet harmonics for the listener. So I decided using a lot more in a speaker based setup 
And generally speaking, when I'm looking at that op amp based output stage, at those two output transistors, I'm not quite impressed. So I've seen much beefier, I've seen much bigger, and I've seen much heavier output stages. And yet, I don't know how Topping did that, but as a DAC only device, uh, D90MQA has a really nice kick into the chest, has a really nice transit response, it got speed, impact, it knows how to land a punch, and it knows how to increase those dynamics just raising the uh, hair on my hands. When it worked as a DAC plus preamp combo in my speaker setup, I felt that there is a degradation in the sound quality compared to the benchmark HPA4 that worked as a preamp, but that is a 3000 uh, US dollar preamp, so I think that is normal to have. So uh, control was worse, I feel that the transit response were just uh, slower and not that hard hitting. And uh, the, that big and airy stage size was just slowly and very steadily shrinking in size. So in all fairness, uh, D90 MQA uh, doesn't really have a true preamp inside. Uh, it's what I'm calling a digital preamp. So it basically attenuates that uh, 2 volt or that 4 volt um, signal. So it will not outperform a dedicated preamp, it will not outperform uh, the preamp inside that uh, Gustav A22 for example, and its preamp section will probably not leave to the legendary status of its uh, DAC section. So it's okay as a preamp, but I think with uh, some powered speakers it's just more than enough. So as a DAC only device uh, in a speaker based setup, leaving the preamp duties to the benchmark HPA4, everything just came back to normal and sincerely between the D90 and QA and my own uh, Matrix Audio Element X. I'm really quite hard pressed uh, to choose one or the other, but more about that in the comparison that will follow. So in terms of background noise, you should know that I cherish that benchmark HP4 so much because it helped me so many times in uh, just discovering all the good stuff a digital source will try to show off and all the bad stuff a digital source will try to hide away from me. So background noise and detail retrieval are probably the hardest things to spot and usually higher quality electronics and higher quality music is needed for that to happen. So there is no other way in saying it. Uh, when I connected some very sensitive IEMs to the benchmark HP4, I uh, pushed that volume level much higher than my comfortable listening level. I pressed play and I, I didn't hear any kind of artifacts, so no buzzes, no noises not a single trace of a nasty gremlin playing into the background, so nothing like that. Simply put, the background was really quiet, it was pitch black, and no matter the volume level or the driver that played that music, I knew that I can always rely on its clean performance. I basically had the same experience in the speaker setup, so I went really really close to the speakers, and there it was, I have heard it loud and clear, it was the sound of silence. Ok guys, so moving on to the transit response. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to talk about and since listening to Antonio Vivaldi will not yield any conclusive results Naturally some hard slamming music will be needed and this is why I started listening to the Prodigy Light Up The Sky that I streamed directly from the Tidal Hi-Fi in MQA format So I put Odyssey LCD 4 on my head and that was the moment when my hands just started flying into the air I was uh, toy tapping like I had to uh, bus pedals under my foot. A massive spike of energy simply hit me up and stomped my body. So this is one of the strongest points of the D90 NQA. It just simply knows how to impress with that perfect pace, rhythm and timing. So it hits hard and it hits pretty fast. So if you are into any kind of uh, faster kicking music and you are seeking any smile inducing performance, then I think uh, D90 NQA is a really good option. As far as Delta Sigma DACs go that are based on any AKM chipset, uh, D90MQA together with D90 and with that uh, Gustav A22 uh, just offered the fastest kick, the hardest slam and it instantly just pushed high those dynamics. So it was simply a roller coaster and depending on a track it would just somehow switch between being a nice guy to being a aggressive puncher. As for resolution and transparency I started listening to the newest album of Letus called Resonate. So if you are into any kind of funk or jazz, I strongly recommend you checking it out uh, because the mastering quality is really top notch. So even from the first track that is called Blaze, I was just taken back by how many instruments are surrounding me. So I simply closed my eyes and uh, I could see every single one very sharp, very outlined, very textured. So they use so many instruments uh, that the treble response 
uh, is so crowded with uh, snares, with drums, with uh, bells, with tambourines that uh, it can be sometimes really be overwhelming uh, because you don't really know where you should look because sounds are coming from everywhere. The most interesting aspect is that in a very complex track like this one I was able to just follow every note that I wanted quite easily so my personal uh, Matrix Audio Element X has uh, clearer leading edges but at the cost of a shallower and a smaller soundstage size uh, that was just less impressive in this song. So no matter the song that I would listen to, uh, the 90 MQA always had a, a see-through transparency that made me appreciate uh, uh, the smallest details uh, in a track. As for soundstage and depth, uh, when I tested the regular D90, it already uh, sounded as the airiest and the widest sounding AKM based DAC. So depth was excellent, that pinpoint location of all the notes was very precise, was very exact. So D90 MQA feels exactly like that, so it excels at live recordings, uh, throwing just a much bigger picture in front of me and just knows how to disentangle even the most crowded tracks uh, there is. So, as was the case of the transit response, I feel that uh, D90 MQA uh, feels just at home with that open A representation. If soundstage is what are you chasing for in a DAC, I feel that D90 MQA together with uh, D90 are probably the best variants uh, right now that will not limit the stage size in any way. Moving on to the frequency response, I'm reminding you that this is still not everything a DAC can show to you, how 90% of the audiophile press around the world thinks. There are still many, many other things a digital source can show to you and can provide. So, as it was the case of the regular D90, uh, D90 MQA plays that sub bass with its chin up, with a chest in the front, and it's very proud about it. D90 MQA is just a, really a champ when it comes to sub bass. And there are only, I think there are only about five DACs that I've heard that I tested at my place that had an amazing low end uh, with that heavy rumble down there that can maintain it for a longer period of time and just uh, decay it really naturally. So this unit offered among the weightest low end from the Delta Sigma Duck Kingdom. Uh, it is not a bass heavy digital source by any means, but a really good one when it comes to bass. Mid range felt defined and textured most of the time. So AKM based ducks mostly shined in the mid range department and were just good at everything else. But D90 MQA together with D90 and with that uh, Gustard A22 are completely different. So offering not only mid range presence, but also naturalness and frequency extremes at both ends. Treble is quite extended. You can clearly hear those bells ringing just right. Uh, cymbal crashes have a really nice pitch. Uh, snare drums are quite lifelike sounding and really textured as well. So the only thing that differentiates uh, this unit from a top of the line DAC is the outline and the leading edge of the treble that is not super defined um, and not very sharp. Treble performance can be felt as a double-edged sword, so some music would probably need a little bit more uh, treble presence up top and some music will need just less sharpness and less uh, texture up top and I feel that uh, the 90 MQA is exactly offering that. So as its name suggests, uh, the 90 MQA is coming with a full-blown MQA decoder that will fully unfold uh, the original MQR file and decode it natively. So I am personally streaming music a lot more often than listening to it uh, from the local hard drive. Why? Because of convenience. Uh, I can access all my tunes uh, from any browser, from any smart device. So when it comes to high resolution MQR file streaming, there are only three services that are offering such files. Uh, Tidal, Koboos and very recently Amazon Music. Now here is the clever part. To play back all those MQR files, uh, you basically have two options. Uh, software decoding that, for example, Tidal desktop app is offering or hardware decoding. But for that, we'll need a full MQA decoder. Luckily, D90 MQA has one inside. Going back and forth between uh, software and hardware decoding, uh, there is a very clear difference and just hardware decoding sounds better to me. So what was the difference? That is the biggest question. So I had the same feelings when I compared a well-mastered 24-bit file 
with the same record but in 60-bit resolution. So the frequency extremes just uh, have a little bit more information up there. So at both ends, I mean, I mean, uh, there is a little bit more sub bass information, a little bit more treble presence. But most importantly, the music sounds just a little bit smoother, more lifelike, uh, more liquid somehow, less digital if you are listening on MQA. So if you are streaming a lot of music like I'm doing, I think that D90 MQA is a worthy or should I say must have upgrade over the regular D90 or over any other topping unit uh, or any other topic DAC. I also compared it with my reference Matrix Audio Element X that I'm using daily plus with the Gustard A22 that you requested quite a lot. But since I don't want to make this video super long or boring, uh, please check out my detailed comparison in the written review that I put below. So going on into the conclusion, I consider that uh, $100 increase in price fully justified, considering that improvements of the XMOS interface and that full MQA decoder. So it's still the same topping D90 that I still love to listen to and recommend uh, here quite often. So I still think that as a DAC only device, it outperforms some of the costlier units and it even came really, really close to my own $3,000 DAC. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support the channel, please subscribe to it. And as usual, listen to my music, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.